Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Sup FM, formerly Sup Podcast. Um, this is the three-year mark of uh, me, Lawrence, Luke, and a special guest here. Um, the three-year anniversary of the start of this podcast. Um, just to go around real quick, um, I have Lawrence Deloach here. How are you, buddy? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Uh, I also have Luke Trevisi. Hey, yo, it's me. He's uh, in a weird hotel. He's about to commit a uh, cat burglary. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there with pink light and shit. It, I, listen, I'm dressed, I'm dressed for the occasion, all right? This is a three-year <laughs> anniversary. I'm here to be represented as the French guy. Everybody knows. <laughs> everybody loves it. Okay. You know, of course, in the background, we have our producer, Matt Meany, but then we have a very special guest. Of course, we have to have him on every monumental moment in the podcast just because he was here from day one and left immediately. Please, <laughs> everybody, clap your hands for Mike Wynn, everybody. Hey. Woo! Yo, I cannot believe you guys still have the show going on. It's amazing <laughs> to me. Thank you so much for, for being here and sticking through it. Um, I want to I've thank lost you a lot personally. of bets because of this. Yeah. <laughs> What's I want to thank you personally for leaving. So I could take your I spot. Left, I left an Asian-sized hole in the <laughs> podcast. What and size hole filled. is that? <laughs> it's a pedophile-sized hole, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I have a beard, too. That's the di- look, That look. makes it worse, dude. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so no, my, Thank w- you for having me on the show. Uh, I'm, 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 I mean, joking aside, I am actually really proud that you guys are kicking ass still. So it was great. Thanks, bud. Thank you yeah. so much, man. It sounds like you shorted uh, Sup. Like you shorted us. You thought we were gonna go under, but we didn't. You didn't. I did. I was. We, I was. Yeah, for a hundred percent. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, I was Bain Capital in this motherfucker, and I was like, no way. I'm putting. I'm shorting this like a like a like a motherfucker, and boom, you guys game stonked it and crushed it. So here I am. I'm holding the bag now. I mean, we fucking we have diamond hands, baby. We diamond hands. Diamond hands, baby. We were diamond hands in it, man. But uh. Yo. I, I thank you, man. I thank you for coming through, man. I, I do have some some gripes that I want to kind of air out with you before we kind of sure. get into this. First, <laughs> yeah. first you left us, and you and you left me with Chris uh, by myself <laughs> Oof. for a a long time. A and, worse face than death. And and Mike, I will be honest with you. I I was like, wow, Mike was the buffer between me wanting to strangle out Chris many times. <laughs> Did you really during why? during the podcast? Uh, I didn't know that. You have. What do you a, mean? Why? You have why? such a mild energy. <laughs> you have such a like honestly like a daily show uh you know correspondent vibe you're so mellow <laughs> that i can't even tell the only time i can sometimes tell you're real upset is you're texting a little bit more than normal <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like well lord's a little pissed he's pissed which is more than me. once you mean like you more than one response yeah Mike. exactly we went through some dark days uh, after you, you left. We were recording the podcast in, in, a, in a car sometimes. Uh, there we, uh, I would Chris, go play. Chris tried to talk to his, uh, Lawrence's basketball friends, and he was like, don't talk to them, please. <laughs> please don't. He, he, I, went, we, I would play basketball on, on Sundays, and Chris and I would record in the car. And, uh, and Chris, at times, was very abrasive to my, my friends, my basketball Asian friends who <laughs> – they looked at me and they were like, who the fuck is this crazy guy in a car with you, Lawrence? But we got <laughs> it. Microphones. We got it set you situated and we bought on Luke. But we're just we're just really happy to have you, man. For real. Thank you. For I'm coming happy. Through. I want to. Well, I mean, so I have to. So then I have to ask how what kept you from murdering Chris? Was it Luke? Was it was that the, the main thing? <laughs> that was definitely the main thing, because yeah! there were these times <laughs> when it was Chris and I just doing the podcast. And I was like, I'm going to punch him in his face soon. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I need someone to take the heat off of. <laughs> Me and Chris, so I said we're gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in a third person, and and we're gonna bring in Luke Trovisi, and Luke came through, and Love he it. kept me from throwing Chris through a roof, <laughs> off a roof. Just for that, Lawrence, I'm gonna get all the supreme stuff in your size. Thank you, brother. <laughs> so, so uh, Mike, you uh, you have a wonderful podcast. Uh, yeah, you left us for you. a better podcast, basically. <laughs> wait, 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 different, maybe different. <laughs> it's a different podcast. <laughs> And I didn't leave you for it. I just had, I just couldn't do both. You know, it's, it's, it's hard enough doing, speaking of being, you know, like Fumi knows this. I want to throw Fumi off a of roof all the time and he's very small. So I could definitely do it. Oh, and you absolutely could yeah, do that. I definitely could do it. And, uh, you know, uh, I had to, you know, put all my energy into doing that. And, and I will be completely honest with you now that I'm not on the show as much, I would say about 40 to 60% of the time, there'd be times you guys would be talking about something. No idea what you're talking about. 
No clue. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, oh, have you seen the uh, iPhone 7 uh, collab with the, uh, you know, uh, Ooh, Eric I, Wilson? So, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I'm like, I'm like Googling furiously. What, you know, you're like, Mike, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, yeah, the color is weird, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck, <laughs> what is happening. Even now, I've already, I've already, thankfully, I'm at home. So I, I can Google all these different things. You guys mentioned something about a taxi. I don't know. I'm looking that up. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So <laughs> I'm looking God. all that up. Mike, I thought I was the only one. Dude, I, <laughs> you guys are for real. Like, you know, Lawrence, you're an OG. Chris, you're just a psycho. So you guys, <laughs> just, you guys just have an encyclopedic knowledge of, these, of this stuff. And some stuff I know about. But, like, you know, I'm just trying to I'm – tr- I was just trying to keep my head up. You know, I – yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. Luke, I feel Luke, you, you, you're, you're in the game. So you know what's going on. I know, I know what's going on at this point. You know? <laughs> at this I mean, point. I mean, when I – when I first yeah. jumped on, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to keep up with these guys. Yo, I mean, <laughs> and, and at the very least, I mean, it's been, you know, three years. I don't even know if you guys still talk about streetwear. Is this what you guys still talk about in, on this podcast? <laughs> oh, I have yeah, no baby. idea. You know, I, is it stocks? And you guys talk about stocks? Because I feel that in some ways, the cultural zeitgeist moved a little bit away from streetwear into doggy coin. You know, Dogecoin, whatever it's Dogecoin. called. Dogecoin. Dogecoin, Dogecoin baby. Doge, yes, so, doggy coin. Oh, do you guys talk about that? Because, like, I feel that is the, – the people who went in hard on off-whites are, is the same crowd that is now into crypto, you know? So I, I don't know if you guys talk about that because you guys should. And well, the, the interesting part about that, Mike, is that you're, you're right sort of that in that some people – carried over but it's just blogger it's like people just listen to the internet that's the only difference like the, oh. those are the people that sort of like watch travis scott wear a pair of like dunks from like 2004 and get all hype and then now they're like oh i have to have, buy a dog crypto coin okay okay right oh, that's fair yeah that's why are you fair. pointing he's trying to single me out without saying that he's singling me <laughs> out because i both own dogecoin and love travis scott so <laughs> Did you get in on it real, real early, or did you get on it just recently? No, I, I got in on it like two years ago. Oh, okay. okay. So I've been, right. I'm making That's good money. That's how you can afford this hotel, buddy. Mm. Yes. Hey, yeah, you pay for it in Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to be traced. No. <laughs> so, Mike, you're, you're, uh, you're, you have a podcast that's called Asian, Not Asian. Yep, check it correct? out. Yep. Check that out. You're, uh, you're at, uh, your, your Instagram and social media is Nice Pants Bro, right? That's right. That's right. Listen, you guys, for all the listeners out there, please make sure you listen to uh, Mike's podcast. It, it is amazing. He does it with another wonderful comi- uh, comic, Fumi Abe. 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 Yep. Fumi Abe. Yes. Fumi Abe. How do you and, know that? You've been on like tons of shows with him, haven't you? I mess up people's last names a lot. I, I don't want to fuck. I'm, I'm like Charles Barkley when it comes to words. All right. So <laughs> there's, there's many words that Lawrence struggles on and we love him for it. So we don't yeah. question. There you uh, go. That's fine. I get it. I'm LZD325. Luke, what, what's your socials? Trevisus. Chris? At Not That Cheney. Not That Cheney, man. Listen, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, and I want to, like, get Mike's opinion on some of this stuff, man. We had an a interesting week in Jordan Brand, mm-hmm. uh, to mm-hmm. say the least. Oh, yeah. We started out, what, what can we, what do you want to start out with? Neutral grays or trophy rooms? Mike, you're the guest. You pick. Yeah, you pick. Which which Hold obscure on. thing do you want to know about? Okay, trophy rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These look cool. Oh, I see. I've seen these before. I've seen these. Why are these so popular? I, okay, maybe I can talk about Let's talk about the trophy rooms. Yeah, yeah. Wait, okay. first off, just give us your first impression as I can see that you're forming one. I'm for, I, I, I saw these uh, on my feed and then I was confused. Because I thought these came out a while ago, and I was wondering why they were coming back. Are these the, are these the joints where like they fade off? They fade off or something? Like the color comes off and it becomes another color? No, I think what you're thinking about is the Spider-Man ones. Okay. Oh, you're thinking of the, well, the, the LA SBs? to Chicago. Yeah, I'm thinking of the LA to Chicago. So I saw oh, those, yeah, and okay. then I saw something, li- and then I was like, oh, is this like the same thing? I don't know what's going on. So that's why I. But th- but then I saw like you know a lot of people the whole instagram thing where they have like 40 of them and they're all like standing around and shit like that so <laughs> i was like what's going on here and wow they are expensive whoa what the fuck okay go ahead so basically to make a make the to make a long story short uh these are um, a trophy room exclusive trophy room is a store in florida that is owned by michael jordan's son uh was it uh jeffrey or whatever his name is was what is it jeff what, what, what's marcus it? marcus I don't like I don't like either one of them to be honest with you, but Marcus is is the owner of Trophy Room, 
Okay. And he literally backdoored thousands upon thousands of pairs to resellers across the country. Openly. Uh-huh. Openly, basically, mm-hmm. yes. Where resellers would go on social media and basically show off, you know, 60 to, you know, hundreds of pairs of uh, these sneakers okay. and that they paid, you know, probably Marcus Jordan, maybe $1,500 a pair to now resell for 2000 to to $2,500, $3,000. Wow. So the, the kid says, we're, Trophy Room says, we're going to have a raffle for you people, for you you normal plebeians, basically. And <laughs> Luke, tell us a little bit about how the raffle went this week. Okay, so uh, <laughs> imagine a, a dumpster fire, right? <laughs> and then you take that dumpster fire and you put it into a bigger dumpster fire. That's basically what happened. Basically, yeah. like what would happen is you would you would apply – and then they'd be like, "Well, the inbox is full. You can't, you can't add anything to this. You can't, can't submit your raffle ticket." And then they said, "Okay, well, we'll they closed the raffle at like twelve thirty, so it was eleven thirty to twelve thirty. And then after that, they said, okay, well, we'll reopen it at three o'clock or whatever.' And it was the same issue. Like it was just you couldn't get, you couldn't get your raffle tickets in. So you know, it's a big hoax, Mike. Um, that uh, seems extremely." Uh... Uh, relevant to our curtain, current political socioeconomic situation. <laughs> Genius move on behalf of, uh, on, on the part of, of Jordan Brand uh, to bring that to the shoe game. So respect. That's crazy. It's, it's like, <laughs> sounds like you've had podcast sneaker political training where you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, are people like, are they, I mean, are we throwing bricks through the store window or anything like that? Are we doing anything nah, rising up I, against capitalism? No, nothing. Okay, no, no, cool no. With this. Perfect. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm, so, all I'm hearing is from the, the guy from the popular podcast, Asian, not Asian is endorsing that we throw bricks through the windows of I'm trophy not, rooms. I'm not endorsing <laughs> it. I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, Hey, you can incite a riot and apparently nothing happens. So, you know, <laughs> this is the country we live in. Uh, but I mean, it's just, you know, this, the backdooring thing is everybody knew about it and now it's, oh, it's up front. And, and I find that to be not surprising, but a little surprising that people are tolerant of it, you know? Well, people, aren't, prices. people are not really tolerant of what's going on. They've, a lot mm-hmm. of people are very upset about what's going on. But what's interesting is because it's, it's Michael Jordan's son uh-huh. who's pretty much doing this, it's kind of like, okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to take away the sneakers or these exclusives that, that Trophy Room gets and then upset the guy who – you know, who got you all of this notoriety, like the money and all these these sneakers that we have. So people were very upset. And then uh, Jordan Brand released a statement uh, in regards to this whole trophy room fiasco. And I'll read it. It says, we remain committed to serving our consumers with authentic Jordan products through Nike.com and our strong distribution network and channels and both online and at brick and mortar retail. What the fuck was that? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Lawrence, that was the most uh, CNN voice I've ever heard anyone read sneaker news. <laughs> that was incredible. Thank you. No but, problem. Yeah. The translation of that is, yo, fuck them kids. We don't give a shit. Y'all just got to stick it out. And what you get is what you get. <laughs> Shut up. Sit down. We don't give a fuck about you. The sneakers are going anyway. Basically. I, I can remember when, um, when the Don C twos had released that everyone was up in arms about the like the way those released and i remember don c said something along the lines of well you know i remember when you know i didn't have the plugs either you know but i figured out a way or i got popping enough where you know people started giving me shit and and i feel like that's the the idea behind these type of releases it's like if you're in the loop, you're in the loop. But if you're not, then you can either pay 3000 or just keep it moving. Yeah, I mean, so Mike, just based off, I mean, because, you know, you kind of have the story now. You know, it was backdoored a lot, whatever, whatever. So what do you think about these shoes generally? Because you're a one guy, right? You I love Jordan one ones. I still have a bunch of ones, yes. I still love so, ones. you know, we haven't got a Chicago in a while. This was supposed to be sort of like our, like, hey, you can have a half a Chicago type of deal, limited edition, like, you know, we'll make it difficult, whatever. But, like, you being a guy who, like, appreciates ones, like, what do you think about now hearing the story? What do you think about these? I, 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 I like them. I mean, I always feel that 
with ones and especially in colorways like this, I'm always like, just release the ones we want, you know? And instead they just go with all the, well, how about this instead? You know, they never give you what we're really looking for. Well, um, I don't know if they were officially ones, but what's that other one that's like, um, it's like, uh, it was like a pack. It was like, there were like two of them. It was like an- Oh, uh, you're talking about the uh, New Beginnings. Yes, yes. It was kind of the same thing. Like I liked them. But at the same yeah. time, I was just like, I feel everything that releases, uh, that comes out, which, which is a one, is just like, oh, I just want a Chicago, you know, original one, you know, I, right. I just want that one. You know, I, that's what I always feel. It's, it's, it's like they're just kind of teasing us the whole time. So that's kind of what I feel. And now that, if anything, I think it's more interesting that, that it's related to a scam. So I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scam involved. So that's sweet. It, yeah. it is like this weird backhanded, like, I don't know. It's just, yeah, because they're doing it in front of us and we've sort of accepted it. We have like Stockholm Syndrome. Is that when you like love your kidnapper, right? Yes. We yes. have like Stockholm Syndrome with Nike when it comes to cer like certain things, especially with Chicago colorways. Well, also, may I add that uh, everyone was like, well, where the fuck are the winners? You have all these sneakers, <laughs> supposedly, that you're supposed to sell to the public and there's no confirmation, you know, winners on the internet. So Michael, Michael Jordan's son, Marcus, ran this scam raffle where there were no winners. The only person or a couple of people that we saw were influencers that won. Ben Baller was one of them. He had posted a confirmation number and it was like confirmation number three. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's not so funny. <laughs> so, so it's, it's like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. You know, it, it's like nothing's going to happen. Like it, it, us as the consumers, we have to say, hey, we're not going to keep feeding into this shit. And, it, and it, it goes into the resale aspect of things. It goes into you need to stick these fucking fake resellers with their $2,000 sneakers and say, I'm not paying this shit. Good yeah. luck moving your product. Yeah. So, I mean, what, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like the, we were talking about stocks before, but like, you know, stocks uh uh you can only they're only you can only realize the value once you have sold them right so yes in on paper there's all these resale resellers with like stock with shoes that are worth thousands of dollars right but if you don't um realize the sale then you don't really have them so i mean are are we are we what do we is there anything you know economically happening with that or do these resellers can they just sit on this for uh, forever and ever Wait, Luke, can you pull up the stock on that? Yeah, no problem. Again, yeah, because we, we can look at the sales. We can get really get technical with Mike. You know, he loves yes, being technical. I do. Yeah, so let's so just let's go to see. the down and see how many sales are actually going on. Um, a lot of 12 point. Number of oh, sales is, is three. Hold on. This is all 12 and a half. Oh, okay. That would make sense. I'm like, yeah, 12.5 seems to be flying. 730. Um, yeah, look at. I mean, the average sale is twenty five hundred. Say, I mean, wow. yeah. So it seems like they're moving. You know, like three hundred <clears throat> seven. Excuse me, seven hundred and thirty seven sales. Um, and so it's not like people are holding on to them. They're definitely moving. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know the exact quantity. Lawrence, do you remember how many they they made of these exactly? Well, there's a rumor. There's twelve thousand. It's supposed to be twelve thousand, I believe. So I mean, twelve thousand compared to not even a thousand sold. Um, I don't know what that stat means to you, but well, you uh, you also have to realize there's there's goat. Well, I think StockX uses a little bit of everything, but there's goat. There's yeah, locals, yeah, of course, of course, of course, so, of course. But I, I mean, at the same time, I feel like you know, if you're if you if all these resellers think that they're going to get three thousand dollars for a shoe, who's paying? How many people are really going to pay that type of money for a sneaker? Right. That they can't even really verify because remember, there's also the rumors that. You know, these sneakers are, some of these are uh, unauthorized. These, some of these are fake. You know, Marcus put in the, the blue laces to quote unquote say these are the real ones, but we don't know, you know, how does StockX know what's, because they're so, the unauthentic ones are so one of one of the real ones, supposedly. So, yeah. It's disgusting. It's fucking, it's disgusting. I don't like where this shit is going. And I just feel like it's, it's, I've been saying that since episode one, probably, but I mean, episode, whatever we're at, you know, three years later, it's still the same bullshit. It's getting worse. 
it, it is, is getting it is getting worse and i wonder i mean you know for supposedly 300 for uh well i'm sorry no i'm looking at the wrong one so i'm looking you know at the, uh, 700 something are are sold um and i do wonder like who's who's buying them you know i wonder you know because like are people buying the, I assume that you, if you buy them, you know, um, in the aftermarket, you're going to wear them or unless people are wearing them and are, are buying them and then holding them again, you know, is that happening? I, I don't know what the economics of this are, you know? I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, cause some people buy off stock X thinking that they can resell the thing they just bought for resale. They're trying to re resell. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, but to more of Lawrence's point, it's kind of like, it's just the whole thing is fucked up. So like, Mike, just yeah. to get to, into you for a second, being the guest or whatever, what was the last thing you bought or sort of um, copped, if you will? Um, and how was your experience doing it? Yo, are you guys into, um, uh, into mechanical keyboards? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you, uh, Yo, like how you Steam felt about Punk? us. Yo, you guys need to get into the mechanical, okay. You look this up later, but mechanical keyboards, exactly the same dynamics as sneakers. Because so what, what, a, what a mechanical keyboard is, is it is a keyboard like kind of like from the 90s or the 80s, where each individual key is like uses has like a little actuator. Okay, yeah, long, long story short, it's supposed to be a better keyboard experience than like your than a keyboard like your Apple keyboard. Um, but the, the reason why it's relevant for this is that um, these keyboards, they're made in limited edition runs. Uh, you, you often have to pre-order them. Um, you, they're highly customizable. And the economics of it is just like sneakers because you, you have to wait. You have to get a, on a pre-order. There's limited edition things. You ha once they're out, they're out forever. A lot of them come from Asia, just like sneakers. <laughs> and, like, okay. and it's the same thing and i feel that a lot of stuff we've been you know we've been talking about or you guys have been talking about with sneakers has bled into all these other categories as far as like mechanical keyboards uh fucking um uh nvidia graphics cards um gaming video game cards uh ps5s right you know yeah. the ability to acquire something backdoor vaccines you know all that shit started and was pioneered by i think by you know the sort of aftermarket sneaker thing so i think it's it's interesting to talk about you know what else am i buying because every i stopped buying as many sneakers in part because of this bullshit but then right. i found that the bullshit followed me around from place to place you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? whatever mm -hmm. so now so now the thing i buy now i'm i'm real into uh like uh what you know salomon's salomon like salomon's yeah yeah i buy very those. asian of you very, it's very, I don't know how that makes sense, but okay. Yeah. So I will, I will buy Salomons and they, they have like fire colorways. They're very easy. They're easy to get, um, you know, like, you know, uh, hipstery art kids like them and, and, and fashiony people like them. They're like shoes, but they're not like, you got to wait, you know, forever. And, and someone's going to backdoor them. You know, I bought some Salomons and they were like the cool colorway ones and everything. And I waited for them to go on sale and they went on sale and I went and bought them. And that was wow. it. And they, and they look fire as fuck and they're cool as shit. And that was easy. It was easy. And so now a lot of times I'm just like, what is easy to get? That's it. Mm. What can I get? Mm. And I feel like, I don't know if you guys have covered this, but that's why everybody got into dunks. You know, everybody got into um, dunks, dunk lows because of like, oh, what can we get? Just what can we get? That's it. What do we not have to go through bullshit about? You know, I'm not related to Michael Jordan. So can I bet buy sneakers still? And everybody got into dunks. I, I mean, dude. dunks became the hardest thing <laughs> yeah. to fucking. Now dunks are hard to get. Yes. Now yeah. dunks are hard to get. But like, I'm always like, what is the thing? You know, are people, uh, can I get into some fucking, I mean, Crocs, you know, like Crocs are mm -hmm. becoming cool now, but I got into Crocs because Crocs are easy to get. I can go down there and get them from fucking CVS. <laughs> what can I get at CVS? That's what I want to buy. <laughs> Yo, Mike's making a lot of sense to me. I don't know about you guys, but he's making a lot of sense to me. No, of course he is. So, I mean, Mike, you and I have, like, had shorthanded conversation about Solomon. I think I hit you about Solomon just because yeah. um, they are becoming, like, this weird trendy shit. Like, the only people that wear Solomons now are people who are going on hikes and then, like, yep. the Asian dudes that realize you could get some hype shit off that. Like, yes. Solomons look good in a fit. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, to your point, this is getting tiring for all of us. 
super tiring. Yeah. Mike, you, you made a good, you made a great point. You were saying how the, the, you know, it's almost like you, you kind of, everything has a sneaker esque culture to it. Like I had a friend, he was trying to sign up his, his grand, his parents for, uh, for vaccines. And, and he was like, basically saying like, you need a fucking bot. You need a bot to get a vaccine. And, you know, and it's, it's scary because that's where we're at. It's like everything kind of reverts back to the shoe and the sneaker culture, man. Yeah, I mean, the more that stuff can be put online, online was supposed to be the big equalizer, but instead it became the great unequalizer. So, you know, everything was supposed to be super fair on the app, but then we all know that's not true. And bots can be can be bought. Um, and then we went back to, you know, brick and mortar, and clearly that's not working. Um, and that's just like the reality of like consumerism, capitalism, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Um, you know, like, but it's it's funny because all of the skills I learned in from buying sneakers, I can apply to uh by getting a vaccine you know yes like exactly. you'll, get the, vaccine, you'll get the supreme I'm, vaccine yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 like following different like notifications on twitter and that's pushing me an email and that email will help me like find us you know a thing and i can autofill everything on the on the new york state website to get the vaccine all that all those skills i learned from you know chasing sneakers so that's like what your what the reality is to get the kids to take the vaccine, they should just let Supreme have it out of the <laughs> store. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I, I think they might have some right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, for the listeners, if you don't know, the reason why my, my background has changed is because I am in a hotel uh, with my girlfriend, which is across the street from Supreme. <laughs> so, and I, I look like this. Did you, did you get the hotel <laughs> across the street from Supreme because you're going to go to Supreme? No, it, it kind of oh, okay. just happened. You sure did. Yeah. <laughs> I promise. It's just, it, that just, it just happened that way. She wanted to like stay in the Lower East Side, and I was like, oh, perfect. I'll, right here is good. <laughs> <laughs> kind of getting back on topic, though. So, like, Mike, you know, you've you know, you yeah. avoided all this shit. You're like, I'm going to just rock Solomon's, like, whatever. I don't need this yeah. hype shit, right? I can, I can get my fits off without this shit. But imagine if you're still involved with this. Like, it's, imagine oh, if you God. still care. Yeah, and then imagine um, one of the most coveted Jordan sixes is about to come back out, right? And then imagine you get your six, and then the sole is fucked up because they fucked up the manufacturing. Um, wait, are you are you asking me a question? Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're talking about uh, th these carmines, these Jordan yep, sixes. Yeah, the carmines. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This soul looks like uh, Luke's background, okay? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this, these, these joints are pink, pink as fuck. Yeah. Here's the thing is that, uh, yeah, well, hold on. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Because is this, is this affecting all of them? That's not affecting all of them. No, not all of them are affected. Um, Jordan Brand has admitted that there's some defects, and they're asking a lot of the uh, retailers to get them back, um, which – is not always the case. They can't always get every pair back. So some people are buying them, especially off StockX and all these other ones that they already purchased and had the fucked up pairs. And they're reselling the fucked up pairs for the premium price of what they should be, even though they're... Yeah. So basically, yeah, Jordan Brand had a release uh, as of uh, today. And uh, on, a, on a pair of sneakers that in the past, uh, like when they bring back the OG colorways and we've seen it before with, uh, you know, the cement threes and the you know and the cement fours and and white and fire red fives where they're in abundance normally and just like this the carmine sixes were supposed to be in abundance it's an all-star weekend release you know we we had the limited two drops of yeah it's a quote-unquote all-star release you know we had the trophy room and the neutral gray ones and this was supposed to be the pair that you know you strike out on on those two and you you have enough to get you know these carmine sixes but Nike fucked up, you know, with, with pink soles. Uh, so, you know, once again, now they ask for the retailers to give them back those sneakers, making this another limited and effect sneaker. Uh, we had posted a video on our, on our Instagram, Sup Pod, Podcast NYC, mm -hmm. um, of uh, resellers in New York City uh, basically trying to stampede their way into Nike town in New York. In in the middle of a pandemic, yeah, for an extra fifty dollars, they're gonna get on the resale. What's happening? Yo, I have it right here. Yeah, I gotta check this out. I love this. 
Yeah, this looks like uh, Walmart <laughs> Black Friday 2005. Damn. This is looking like the Capitol uh, riot here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you notice this one girl who's just getting stampeded right now? Right here? Right in the middle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, you see her? It is the Capitol riot for niggas. They trying to fight for their freedom, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> At the end of the day, that's what they trying to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Them, jo them Jordans is financial freedom for the month. They trying to get some food for their family or whatever the fuck they trying to do. Yep. So I need QA. I need QA on to get up into the sneaker game and talk about like you know who, you know the the Jordan Cabal that's uh, that, that's that's, <laughs> that's that's molesting kids or whatever. You know, so <laughs> we need we need to get that in there. That's crazy, man. We have this issue with Jordan Brand. And I, I will continue to say it till the cows come home where Gentry Humphrey took over Jordan Brand again and he's bringing it back to disgusting levels that just like he had it, you know, in, in the early 2010s. It's fucking nasty out there. And for these kids to be out here in a pandemic and risking their lives for, you know, like Chris said, an extra $50, $60 profit, it, uh, it goes to show you where we're at in, as a country, you know, and and this sneaker and the streetwear shit, it's like, it's not worth it, man. It's, uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, if you want the sneaker, I get it, but I just don't get the stampede over like that small resale number. You know what I mean? Like that margin is not even close to, and especially, all right, so say you even get it and then you want to, you still have to ship and sh you know what I mean? Like there's still costs on that. So you, you're not even eating like a full meal after that. No, you're, you're getting $20. Yeah, like Luke can't take out um, his girl for Valentine's Day selling some car mines. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have to sell 20 car mines to get this room. You're not even covering one night at the hotel. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, you look at we look at like just based on stock X numbers and I'm looking at my size, which is a size 12. The highest bid right now is two hundred and ninety dollars. The lowest ask is two ninety five. So that's a five dollar difference. If the if the seller was to sell at two hundred and ninety dollars after stock X fees, uh, which I believe I'm not sure if they if they reduce the the seller fees, but you would walk away with two hundred and fifty five dollars, which is a basically a thirty eight dollar return. So you're you're stampeding for thirty eight dollars. Yeah. You're going to go home to your family and possibly give your loved ones COVID for $38? With a bruise because some girl kicked you in the knee? Or, yeah. I mean, the face with her knee? This is why we need to raise the minimum wage. You know, this is minimum <laughs> wage money right here. That's, Mike, are you, know, you running had, for office? Are you trying yeah, to it's true. <laughs> If we have, yeah, me and Andrew Yang, you know, okay? We <laughs> yeah. can push through. If we could push through this $15 an hour minimum wage, Okay, that's two hours right there. You don't got to go to Jordan Brand and try to risk your life for COVID. This is it all. It's all connected, baby. Okay, how much is it, of this is affected by the minimum wage? You know, I, I'm I'm taking this off topic, but you you get it. You get it, right? You get it. You know, like this is what people need to do for money. You know, this is because we can't. You know, people people. It's hard to it's hard to make a living now. There's no now. COVID made everything worse, and now people are like, yo, I need to get on this so i can make 38 dollars or whatever uh, well Lawrence just said. part part of the main issue is that you know if us looking at it from our uh, from our end as a consumer who actually wants the sneakers maybe not these ones but a pair that in the future in the past this has happened to it's like how are we supposed to get the sneakers when someone's trampling you for 30 dollars? like if i could have bought it i wouldn't mm -hmm. have sold it i would have wore it right but right. there's a guy behind me with a, with a fucking stock x account who's like willing to knee me in the back just so he can make 30 dollars. it's crazy <laughs> right Right. Yeah, it's it gets to that point, man, where, you know, and, and Jordan Brand, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I think, you know, obviously with COVID, uh, some of these production, you know, numbers are a little off. You know, the factories aren't able to get out as many, but, but like Jordan Brand, they, this is not, they always have defects on sneakers, bro. Like Jordan 1s, there's Glittergate. On Jordan's, these Jordan 6s, there's a mm. pink sole. It's like people mm. are fucking going crazy for mm -hmm. sneakers that, are fucking defective all the time. Well, personally, I find it to be a collector's item, so I'm gonna be collecting <laughs> them all. I was gonna. Well, you would say that with your with your colorful background. What, what, <laughs> I do wonder that. You know, I mean, is there is there any? I mean, you can completely tell me shut the fuck up if if I'm what I'm saying is stupid. But 
is there like a oh maybe in you know the, this is a cool defective pair i don't know is there something is that is that a thing i'm sure in 10 years there will be a guy who's like these are the these are the ones that got canceled because of the pink soul. They had to be. Yes, yeah, Bernie surprised. Sanders is going to be going. These <laughs> yeah, are the yeah, pink yeah. souls. I'm once again asking you, <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> to buy to buy these sneakers. <laughs> buy sneakers only if you're going to wear them. Don't buy them for resale. <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. It, uh, it's a deep. It's a big issue, man. And you know, and I think store, these stores are are fully aware of what's going on, and they don't mind the publicity because to have like. There's better ways than having first come first serve for this shit, you know, in, in a pandemic in New York. Or a rigged Which, raffle. There's a better way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's better ways for all of this stuff. What What is that? I mean, have you guys, have you, have you guys brainstormed that? <laughs> what is that? Several times. My yes. idea was that if I became, if we just made me the head of the board of Nike, Yo, you, Everybody okay. can get the shoes that they want because I, right. I just keep making the same shoes over and over again. That was my <laughs> idea. But these guys don't seem to yep. agree. They don't really, okay. you know, what are your stances, boys? Go ahead. Tell them. Tell, tell them your great ideas. Yeah, Lawrence, I want to hear. And Chris? Chris, you can go first. I mean, I think I, I personally loved the you have to wear them out. And I know that's it's there's so many problems with that method but with that method you allow that ds tag to be removed so i think less people will care about the second you know i think more people will try to get it to wear it versus buy to buy to sell because you can't have that ds tag immediately on that screenshot like you just can't say they're dead stuck because you have to walk out in them um but i know there's a bunch of problems with that some people don't always want to wear their sneakers out, and I mm -hmm. totally get that. Like, I have shoes that I bought that I intended to wear that I haven't bought, and I bought them four years ago, you know? Right. But that's just me. Also, internet no, sales. Okay. Yeah. Right. Lawrence, Lawrence what you your, got? What's your idea? Um, I'm kind of on the same level to a certain extent as Chris, like, like you said, like wearing it out. Um... But I also understand that whole, like, I have I mean, there's been sneakers that I, I've purchased and I've been like, oh, I can't wait to wear these. And then, you know, and just like in true American fashion, we have such an abundance that like a year later, you're like, you know what? I, I don't need these. So it's like, but there, there has to be something done because this reselling thing is, it's too trendy. And I feel like too many, like, like you can have grandmothers being like, Oh, I, I want to, let me just click, you know, this and I can make hundreds of dollars. And it's like, it's getting to the point where I always say the bubble's going to pop, but it hasn't, but it, it, it needs to we need a, we need a social cleansing on this shit, man. Yeah. The surface tension I thought would have broke by now, but it doesn't even seem like the bubble is even close to imploding on itself. So tell mm -hmm. me not Mike board of board of Nike is the best idea though. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but it is kind of the best idea I've heard so far. Let's go, okay, Mike. Let's, get, let's, let's go. Get, let's get uh, let's get let's go ahead and get Luke to be a majority shareholder of Nike. It's probably almost several billion dollars. Um, Bro, I will launder so much money to New York City when you're mayor. Let me I let me tell you. you, okay. The way we're gonna do this is to raise the minimum wage. Okay, this is what <laughs> this is about. I, I'm 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 joking, but I'm also not joking because this is like this is how. This is what happens when rampant inequality is the name of the game. That's, this is entirely what this is about. This is like, um, I can't get a job. There's an easy way to make money. Same thing with uh, the whole thing with GameStop. This, all this stuff is all tied together mm -hmm. because it's inaccessible. And everybody's trying to get the angle because they don't make enough money from their fucking normal job, you know, mm -hmm. real wages haven't increased in about 15 years, maybe long 20 years or something real wages for on average for regular Americans. You think I'm joking. I'm not joking. This is for real. This is, <laughs> this is all tied together. This is all tied together, you know? So that's what's, what's going on. And are you going to take us to your room next door with a bunch of red string on it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. First of all, it all starts with this man. No. Uh, yeah. So Virgil okay. Abloh starts with Virgil. Him. Virgil Abloh, he's in cahoots with Hillary, okay? <laughs> Crooked Hillary. The email. Or check the server. Check the email server. 
Who, where do you think, where, you know that email server that's in the Clinton basement? That is the one, the same server uh, runs um, the sneaker app. So you check that out. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> oh, that's why I can't get through on that shit. Oh, damn. You can't get through because that because Bill's on there. Okay. <laughs> Bill's, on, Bill's there. on there. He's deleting all of his uh his porn and and that's slowing down the app. So Bruno right, right. and Hillary are all interconnected, man. I'm oh telling fuck. You. Oh. you don't fuck with the app, right? What the sneaker app or whatever? Yeah. No, I mean, um, from what I can keep tabs on, as far as my other friends who are also, who are still in the game, uh, it's also fucked up. Uh, apparently, uh, I, haven't, <laughs> I, 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 have, I haven't tried to use it in a while. Allegedly, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Okay. No, that shit is trash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit sucks. Call that's... Bill. Call Bill. Call Bill. Call Hillary. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. it's, it's on them. I mean. Nike has been doing some right. Uh, overall, I saw the neutral grays have a uh, critically acclaimed release and reception as far as the quality. So, you know, sometimes we get a midsole that's pink. Sometimes we get a nice shoe that we all want, you know? Let me pull that up for you, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Um, these are the standards. Like, nothing too crazy about them. They're just an 85 model so a lot of people got hyped for that it's there's nothing other than other than that that's really special about it um no one i know hit but from what i saw people uh liked them a lot what about you guys i, uh, I had a friend that yeah go ahead hit, i had a friend that hit on sneakers he was uh shocked and shooketh to say the least uh, <laughs> he was not expecting to win but he he won and i was happy for him and he got his pair in and he said he loved them and he loves them and he's gonna wear them so nice Good. I'm happy that they went into the right hands. Look, what do we what do we got going on here? Uh, what what are we looking at? <laughs> uh, it's just a white bar. Oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. Hold on. You hacking into that server or what? <laughs> I, I was trying. <laughs> uh, this is the shoe, right here. We had somebody in our Discord win a pair mm-hmm. at a raffle. Uh, shout out. Who was it? Alex. AM to PM. Alex. Alex. That big footed motherfucker. He's always winning something. <laughs> you always winning something, Alex. Stop fucking winning. You win everything, all right? I said one time I was like, damn, Alex, you win everything. Alex was like, Lawrence, well, you won civilist. I'm like, motherfucker, you win everything, all right? Shout out to Alex, though. I'm happy that you won Neutral Grace because you're a good dude. You deserve him. You shout out to the whole Discord. Mike, you got to come in and, and hang out on the Discord a little bit, man. Yeah, Fumi's in our you. Discord. Really? Yeah, yeah, your podcast is technically in our Discord. Yeah. Um, Okay. They're I, lurkers. I've not, used, I've not used a Discord a lot in general, so it's just and, like a big challenge. And actually, you know what? Just going back, you mentioned lurkers. I found out that a bunch of motherfuckers who actually work in this shit, like basically my peers, use our raffle uh, channel to help them get raffles. Oh, that's cool. Wait, wait say that again. Wait, wait, wait say that again. So, mother, like, pe- pe- um, peers of mine, right? So, other designers that work in streetwear use our Discord. Mm-hmm. They use our raffle channel to help get the shoes that they're trying to get. Wow. Wow. So I'm talking so have- like in this, I'm, the people who told me who they did this, I'm like, yo, but you're like a senior, like you're like, I would consider you like a mentor to me. <laughs> you're using my Discord We're raffle. Right. Well, guess what? They better OGs. fucking come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> some of them have, some of them have, but yeah, they are my OGs, okay. Mike. Okay, okay. So, like, sure. my first job that I had at Echo, some of these dudes are, like, you know, keeping tabs on what's going on in Discord for raffles. And I'm like, you should be getting the sneaker sent to you. This is ridiculous. No so, love. Could- yeah. Uh, Mike, we have, a, we have a channel in our Discord where we put all the links for raffles that are coming out. So if you're a listener and you want to join that shit, links in the bio. You should also okay. join in, too. Okay. And you can I'll join. Get back in the rat race with us, man. I'm into that. I'm into that. I mean, I, okay. You know, I haven't, I haven't tried to, okay. You guys are going to make fun of me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. But, uh, the, the shoe that I think I've been in, um, hipster Brooklyn too long because I was looking at getting some of those blunt stones. You guys into blunt stones. <laughs> I don't even know, know what you're, are? I don't I even know what you're talking about. You guys about. don't even know. Nope. Oh God. That's so nice. Um, <laughs> put, put us on. Okay. Luke, Google are, that shit. I'm Googling. Blunt stone. These are the shoe. This is like the quintessential. I go to Pratt shoe. Oh, okay? the Chelsea boot. What is it? A loafer? Yeah, it's, it's like a Chelsea boot. Um, 
that it, it comes from Australia. They got real popular because... I don't know why they're real popular, um, they're, but like apparently, like one. <laughs> That's every shoe ever, though. So I don't know why so, this is popular. <laughs> I don't know why they're so popular, but apparently, one in every ten uh, Israelis. This is it's real big in Israel. <laughs> have these shoes. These are like are these are like, I swear to God. Now that I've told you about these, you will see them everywhere. Every hipster, um, you know, white person that is uh that you know is is a uh, is a graphic designer or works careful at now a, works at a plant <laughs> works at a plant store chris chris oh, these no no okay plant store can confirm was in a plant, plant store the other day i just bought this plant i'm not joking and yep. she was wearing a shoe pretty similar to these yep Jesus everyone Christ. has these shoes i mean every uh hipstery white person so this is like uh, this is like dress wear succession where it's like it's you not, know about it and now yeah. everybody else knows it like you just share it with people until everybody knows it's it's uh it's it's a it's a big thing and i i started noticing it because people pull them out for winter because they're good for i guess good for winter and shit like that um so i started seeing them around everywhere and i was like oh shoot i thought for a while these were just like doc martens that like the a chelsea version of doc martin and so I was like looking at them. And then of course I realized, you know, once they have like a couple, um, there's a couple thought pieces on them on New York times. And I was like, okay, this is a thing. So now I realize what these are. So, but this is, this is the shoe that everybody that who isn't into sneakers wears. Wait, so you bought, you have them now? I don't have these shoes. Oh, okay. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you. These shoes, quite frankly, are ugly. And <laughs> I'm deep down. I still need to wear like, colorful cool shoes so that's why i went with solomon because they have like better colorways these are these are straight up ugly shoes man you know yeah i can't i can't wear i mean i still wear a lot of like polo you know i can't be wearing like polo stuff and and, and all all my you know like japanese designer shit and then end with blundstones that's terrible what 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 kind of <laughs> high beast would i be if i wore these around mike i have a question for you man uh yeah. do you still like you know do you still have a lot of the, the sneakers that you, you you had three years ago or have you sold things or i still mm -hmm. have them i i'll be honest i don't wear them as much anymore i mean a lot of it is because of the pandemic but can i tell you that um i did the knit back when the knit was still a thing mm -hmm. and i was so proud of myself when i did the knit that i wore i you know, i only wear my um this is the knitting factory in Williamsburg. Every Sunday they had a good show for the, those listeners who are not into comedy. Yeah, keep going. Yes, I, I wore my, um, uh, my, 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 my ones uh, for that. I only wear them once in a while. You know, I have four kinds of ones. I have the top threes. I have uh, royals. I have um, fuck, uh, the bread toes. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I have breads. And the bread ones, and when I got them, I was like, this is some special shit, you know? Um, and I, I remember what happened is I got them from round two. There was one in Lower East. I don't know if it's still there. It's still there. there. Um, I, it, was, it was great because I sold uh, a hoodie. I had a hoodie from, oh, shit, it's not Off-White. Um, fuck, who is it? Can't remember. Uh, maybe it's off white. I don't know. May whatever. I designer hoodie. hoodie. Sure. Yeah. Designer yeah. hoodie. Because I was like, I can't wear this <clears throat> anymore. I look like a crazy Vancouver Chinese kid. So I sold. Sounds that. like off white. Yep. So it was, <laughs> I think it was off white. So I sold it to them. I mean, like you know, they they buy you know hoodies, mm -hmm. and and it was in good condition and everything. So they they got it for store credit for like two hundred bucks, and then they had some bread uh, ones come through, that were not dead stock. These are not dead stock, but they, I mean they look very clean. Mm -hmm. and it was great and, uh, and then you know so it was like i i i got this you know, used a store credit and i paid like another couple hundred bucks for it and it was a great deal and i was like i'm putting these away and um now i only wear them they're like my tuxedos you know what i'm saying i'll only wear them like if something really awesome is happening so i wore them at the knit and it was it was great i don't think anyone noticed but i did so. <laughs> it's for sure no one noticed so if you're no a comedian noticed. and you have a show and mike's on it and he's not wearing his bread ones you don't <laughs> care about your show yeah <laughs> well no one all sh all shows are, cr are trash except for the, the knit was great that was amazing shout out to I, the knit i've i've wore uh nice sneakers when i've when i've done the knit as well so i i understand See? when i've done the knit, there's like you said mike there's certain shows that you like to you know look nice for and and yeah. uh you yeah, had sometimes. A... I wore them also when I did I did a I did a half hour 
uh, with Natalie Ocker and like I, we rented out a little like space and I wore them there. I remember that. You know, because it, when, when I did the knit, it, I felt like I was getting a master's degree in comedy, which is like the worst master's degree in the entire world. But <laughs> I, I felt like I was getting my master's degree and I was like, okay, I got to like at least kind of try to represent a little bit. So, but now, now I, now I can't wear them. I mean, I don't know. Are you guys still wearing a lot of sneakers and shit in the pandemic? All the time. Really? <laughs> All the time. Well, I, I go what? like right around the block to get like cigarettes and milk <laughs> and I always wear combo. just like some heat. What, 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 <laughs> what a like, combo. What are you like a divorced dad? What the fuck is that? <laughs> cigarettes, and milk? cigarettes and milk? How old are you? <laughs> I'll never let you know. <laughs> Um, no, I'll, I'll get dressed up in the house sometimes. Cause okay. you know, <laughs> as, as we all can kind of agree, a lot of this isn't for other people. A lot of it's just for yeah. us. You know what I mean? Well, so. I, yeah, I guess I forgot you're a white dude. You wear sneakers in the house, like an animal. So I like, I, do not, <laughs> I wear, um, I wear Crocs. You got shoes on right now though. Don't play me like that. I know, but I got my Crocs on. You know, I got my, I got my Crocs. I got, I got so many Crocs. <laughs> You're yeah. Hunter Camo Crocs. Oh yeah, you... hold up, hold up, hold up. You want to see something super fire I got? Hold on, hold on. Let me get... Yes, okay, more than anything. <laughs> you know, I might, I might break off and do a podcast with Mike, guys. I got to no. be honest with you. <laughs> Yo, check these joints out, okay? These are the KFC Crocs. No, the KFCs? Get those out of here. I'm you have the KFCs? These are these KFC Crocs. I got this from my wife. It was her birthday. And I was, it was either this or the Bad Bunny Crocs that glow in the dark. And them joints are really expensive still. So, so these are reasonable price, even for the women's sizes. Um, and these are fire, dude. Yeah, those are, are not fire. fire. These those are not fire. Are no, no, no. He's absolutely incredible. Stuff. He's right. He's right. He's right. You don't understand the cultural impact that KFC has on Asians. Yo, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'm now that you guys you brought this, this up, show. you're gonna come on to Asia, not Asian, son. Fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> Wait, you know what? Actually, so look, uh, this is a super sidebar. It's some super nerd shit, but KFC, Michael, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. KFC has been low key stealing from Adidas for years. Okay. If you look okay. at any KFC store, you're gonna notice there's a bunch of three stripes on there. Oh. I'm not joking. No, 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 really? no. Slowly over time, they had their own identity, right? Where they sort of had some stripey shit. I mean, you just think about the buckets, yeah. right? You could see where it all came from. Yeah. Then uh, slowly over time, they've condensed and streamlined that stripe shit into three stripes. And now they basically, the red Adidas everywhere. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. I can see that. But I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, the, the person who did the brand strategy for, and I feel your listeners would be into this because brand strategy i think for um kfc is is excellent they have amazing collabs mm -hmm, they have great mm -hmm. advertising mm -hmm. they took a sneaker this is again sneaker culture influencing all these other things they took a sneaker approach to advertising you know they come up with fire ad, uh commercials they they're constantly changing out the kernel the kernel used to be one dude now it's like 40 dudes uh they come out with cool collabs it's it's how to stay relevant, man. You know, that three. I'm telling you, when you guys look at a KFC now, you're gonna come back to me and and agree with me. They are yep. stealing I, that. Sh they, they basically look like tracks track suits. Nah, I'm gonna be like that. Chicken was I. Right. That's all I'm gonna say. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it was I right. hit the spot. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, back to your question, Lawrence. Those, that's what I've been I've been buying. I get to the point now sometimes where I started to really feel like it's it's time to sell some of this shit. But I think as a, a like, it, but then you you hoard. I feel like I'm I'm just a hoarder as well at this point, man. And like, you know, how would you move every? How would you move it? I mean, like you know, like is there? You know, what I'm saying you still sell it on. Why would you sell it on? You know, I, I that you know I think I think you have to look and say what's the best price I can get. But at the same time, I mean, we're I think the the movement has changed where maybe you know five to seven years ago people weren't as into you sneakers as you know people are now yeah but i think you sneakers you know it, it's such a great market where it's like you can sell your you shit and someone people will buy it because people don't beat up their sneakers like that anymore you have too right. many sneakers to really mess up yep so i get to that point like you said where we don't really go out and i mean granted you know this is a, a era in life where you know it'll probably never happen again but it's like you i mean you don't really wear your sneakers but we have so many right yeah 
<clears throat> it's mm. I'm I kind of had a day. So just a moment of transparency. Like we had a Saucony meeting at work, and there was like three samples, four samples, or whatever. And uh, you know we decide what one we were gonna pick, and we're like, I will right, we'll go with this one, whatever. Um, and after I'm like, what do you guys want to do with these other samples? They're like, aren't you sample size? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, you just take it. Mm -hmm. So I just walk, I just came home with three shoes. Mm -hmm. And if this is right. gonna be the rest of my, like, you know, as as long as I'm working with these guys, then like I'm just gonna be coming home with like mad shoes. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point where like I'm sort of conscious of like. You know, because I told you guys, like, you know, Mike, just to put you on, like, I've been kind of getting on Poshmark, trying to get rid of, like, my beaters, you know, trying to move some of the stuff that I know I'm not wearing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now, like, I saw so I, I sold six, but I'm coming home with three. I'm like, yo, this is a bad move. I got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. But I'm also mm -hmm. not going to let these samples just go to someone else. Like, I, of course I want them. These are the only ones in existence. I, I think the I think the the big thing that's keeping me from buying more stuff and making me more considered is that I just live in New York and I just don't have the room for it. You know, I think if I lived in the suburbs, you know, I lived in like fucking West Virginia and I had a big ass house and I didn't have to worry about like, oh, I have a limit on what I can fit into, you know, my apartment. I would be keeping a lot more and I would be buying a lot more stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So the big thing that's limiting yeah. me is just like, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm coming out the ears with like all and and I don't know about you, but I've been buying a lot of stuff during the pandemic, which I like <laughs> crazy regret exercise equipment camera yeah. equipment that mm -hmm. i'm like oh i'm totally going to use this do not use it uh um, yeah so i mean you know that's the thing that's that's tr that's kind of keeping me from buying more at least make giving me pause you know yeah the next thing i'm going to buy this mechanical keyboard i'm telling you guys gotta get <laughs> <of this> mechanical <laughs> i mean i think this is sort of a good spot to sort of like start the dismount on mike i know you had a soft out so at least we can kind of does anyone have any final thoughts or anything before we get out of here uh, thanks for coming on, Mike. It felt good to have another Asian on. <laughs> I, I, real talk. Um, I had a great time. This is probably the best time I've ever had on the show. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 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 best time. and I used to be on, I used to be one of the hosts on this show back in the day, but here's the thing. The reason why is because now I've, I'm, I've, I've, uh, been trying to practice this. I'm more transparent. I'm trying to be very transparent. Okay, and it was awesome to say that I don't know what uh, I'm talking about, and a lot of times I don't know what you guys are talking about. It feels <laughs> good to say that, and I think we get into a better place from saying that because now I can uh, be honest about what it is, and uh, you know I, I'm I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna talk about mechanical key keyboards. I'm gonna talk about <laughs> Bloodstones. I'm gonna talk about um the the sneaker app runs off of the Hillary and Bill um, <laughs> web server in their basement. Right. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> look into it. Tell me I'm wrong. Prove that I'm wrong. Right. Right. You can't. You can't. You know. I mean, look at the data. All right. The sneaker app is sneaker app is trash. Um, and, we need to uh, raise the minimum wage so the kids can buy the, the sneakers. Minimum, raise the minimum wage. And also because I haven't looked in a while, this is actually kind of a fun thing. Is that like, you know, speaking of diamond hands, I haven't looked at how much my breads are. Uh, I looked at, at them. I can't believe the, how much money they cost. I. <laughs> It's crazy how much I look at a shoe. Uh, I, I still, to this day, think about how I once had the opportunity to buy, um, like, the off-white, you know, Jordan ones, the ones that kicked everything off, right? The, mm -hmm. the first ones. And, and at the time, they were, like, $1,800. And I was like, God damn, $1,800. Now them joints, those things are $4,000, $5,000. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where the top of this market is because I feel <laughs> I could buy into something. I could buy into any, this, you know, some crazy sneaker and I will still reap uh, a profit. That's not how it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So anyways, yeah. Well, we're happy to have you back, buddy. Yeah. I will be, I will be back. If you have me back, if you will have me back, I will be back. Now Mike. that I have Google, now that, you know what, honestly, <laughs> it's nice. Luke. Yeah, you are definitely. I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's because you're Asian. I just feel way, way better here. Just, just feel <laughs> way more comfortable. You feel safe. You feel safer. <laughs> yeah. Safe. Now I you know it. what he was intimidated by Becky. Yeah. Becky, honestly, okay, honestly, <laughs> Becky was very intimidating because we would just be talking. Lawrence would just be on it, like he'd be texting. I could tell Lawrence was super pissed. Chris, <laughs> Chris would be going off on some angle. I wouldn't. I was like, oh man, let me tell you about this. This time I smoked. Uh, uh, you know, smoke crystal meth with the with the guy who invented the Nike swoosh. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, Chris? And then, meanwhile, 
Becky is like rolling like the fattest J I've ever <laughs> shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, what what is this? And then we're in her house that like she she like lives in this with her husband who doesn't live there and then yep. in a bunk bed. <laughs> yep. And yeah, I was, was like, yo, I am in someone's bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot be doing this. And that, that but, table I mean, that she you, was you were sweet, but you know, I was just like, this is crazy. That table that you were podcasting on was handmade by her husband. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I just, it was too much for me, man. It was too much. Yeah. For me, but anyways. Well, no, we were, uh, we're happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to check out this Discord too. Yeah, Mike, come please, in the Discord. Please join the Discord, man. And, and like everyone else is saying, man, it really is really happy to have you back. And, and you're always welcome, bro. You know what I mean? Luke, you can stay, you know, and, um, yeah, you and you can stay. And because if Mike wanted his old spot back, you know, we would have had to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I think no, he just no, wants no, to you, visit every now and again. So I will visit, but also you guys got it wrong. I'm taking Luke with me. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or if you're about to murder Chris again. You gotta get another Asian. You gotta get another Asian. There's not There's a little bunch of Asian comics now. So that's no, okay. but they're There's not hype beasts. There's only a couple. We can't. We can't just have any Asian in here. You know what I mean? No, they'll learn. They'll learn. Trust they'll me. Learn. They'll, they'll learn. learn. Yeah, Luke, Luke just said he didn't know what he was. You guys were talking about. So all right. Anyways, oh. anyways thanks very much for having me, and uh, you guys stay safe. Thanks so much, guys. Oh, and, and once again, thank you. And also, we can once again, we can find you at uh, Nice Pants Bro. Nice Pants Bro on Instagram. Check out my uh, podcast, Asian, not Asian pod. Um, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a good time. And uh, much love to you guys. Awesome. That's my guy. Uh, one last time, LZD325, Trovisus, uh, Three Meanie, Not That Cheney. Uh, again, guys, three years. It's been a crazy ride. Uh, it, like Mike said, like Lawrence has said, like, uh, we didn't know how long this was actually going to last. So it's crazy. We got to three. You know, it's going to be the same show, just a new facelift on it. And we just appreciate you guys in the Discord and review and Patreon. That's it.